Hey, what's up guys, Sir Eminon here, and welcome to another feature match commentary on the channel today. So this is going to be round one of the 3v3 LCS that's happening this current weekend, and it's going to be featuring Joseph Rothschild, aka MBT. Uh, definitely go sub to him on YouTube, of course, if you haven't already. But he's going to be playing the Tri Brigade Lurelisk deck, aka Bird Up, as he likes to call it. Uh, and his opponent today is going to be Ricardo Capelli on Drytron. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. So it looks like Joseph is going to be winning the RPS. I accidentally pressed fast forward, but I guess they tied a bunch anyways, so worked out there. But he's going to choose to go first, and the opening hand for the Bird Up deck is going to be Turquoise Warbler, 1 for 1, Nerval, Cobalt Sparrow, and Ash. So this hand is extremely, extremely good. Uh, has access to both parts of the engine in the tri Brigades and the Lyrolisks. Uh, Nerval can float into another name, um, and then you know these can search each other, or the Cobalt can search for the Sapphire Swallow, which is the third one. And then one for one can back everything up, so this hand is looking extremely good. And then for Drytron, the hand is going to be Alpha, Ava, Emergency, Dawn Knight, and Bentem. So the hand's also really good if they were going first, but because they're going second and they have no hand traps to stop this combo, they actually might just instantly lose to the board that this deck puts up, which is the Wind Barrier Statue with Link able to protect it from battle. So I don't think Drytron actually just has a native out to it, game one. Gonna go to main phase. Uh, activate Turquoise Warbler, or rather special her effect, and then activate her effect. Um, of course, there's no monsters, so you can special her for free. And then Cobalt Sparrow comes out, that's going to search for another Weirless name. This pick is probably going to be the Sapphire. Yep. And then going to Overlay for the Vessel of Starling. Uh, that's going to Detach to search for DD Crow. Weirless was actually one of the first decks I ever played. It's kind of funny to see them in action here. Um, but DD Crow going to be searched. Uh, that's actually a very good search target, of course. You know, people probably know this from Spiral. Um, but yeah, we have everything else already. So we can now go for Sapphire Swallow here. That's going to summon herself and the Nerval out of hand. And then going to attempt to use Nerval, but I don't think there's any Link 1s in the game that are Beast, Beast Warrior, Link Wing Beast. I could be wrong about that. We'll see. Oh, all right. He said, can't know Link 1 targets. Fair enough. Uh, then going to have to 1 for 1 instead to pitch DD Crow and summon out Cobalt Sparrow. This seems maybe a bit suboptimal. There's possibly a world where like you link these away and then go for like a link three, maybe. I'm not an expert on this deck though, so I'm not gonna pretend to be one. We'll just go and see what happens. Uh Nerval effect, that's going to banish two to summon out the Baron Blossom. And then going to link into Appaloosa. Yeah, in case you guys are wondering, the restriction of the tri brigades is that the um the loop materials have to be these three types, but the monster you summon still don't have to be, right? They can still be anything. So we get to trigger the Link Monster and Nerval here. So the Baron Blossom going to draw Ash and put Ash back, <laughs> and then going to draw Fractal. And we have not Normal Summon yet, I don't believe, so we can just go for the Normal here. So we can go for Link Karibo, which protects the Barrier Statue, of course, and then going to go Normal Summon Fractal, use that effect. That's going to banish 3 to summon out Simorg. And then end phase, going to go for Simorg effect to summon out the Wind Barrier Statue. I'm trying to think of like maybe the ways in which this could have been done different. So the board was like Nerval, Sparrow, and the Resital Starling. So I think we could have like linked away the Resital Starling and the Turquoise Warbler uh, into, into the Tri Brigade. And then... Hmm... Actually, yeah, it would have been kind of tough, wouldn't it have been? Yeah, I, I think I think this could have been played maybe a little bit different, but it's all right. Uh, no harm, no foul, because the end board is still pretty good. It's like what you want it to be. So you're not going to fuss over the details here, actually. Uh, the turn, or the top deck is going to be Orange Light for turn, which is right on time as usual. Definitely needed that last turn. Now it's just completely dead. Uh, this hand definitely does not beat the Wind Barrier Statue. Uh, it's going to pass... And then for turn, we're going to see another top deck Ash. It's funny because this Ash was drawn off the Baron Blossom, and he drew it again anyway. Uh, going to go to main phase 1. Uh, going to switch the Barrier Statue to your attack position. How much damage is this? Uh, this is 48, 58, 61, and exact game. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, going to attack for Appaloosa for 24, and attack with the Simorg for another 24, and then 19 plus 13, and that is game right there. So, Bird Up going to be taking a very convincing game one against Drytron. Honestly, I imagine that this is one of the better matchups because that board seems to just be an FTK against uh, Drytron if they have no way to stop it. Because um, they just have no in-engine ways to deal with it. And they have plenty of space to play hand traps, so... 
definitely a good sign. So go to go, we're going to go into game two, and Drytron going to opt to start. Not anything too surprising here. So the opening hand for Drytron is going to be Ultimate Ness, Alpha, Benton, Orange Light, Gamma. This hand is cracked. <laughs> this hand has Orange Light to protect, and then the classic combo of Alpha, Benton. So very, very good. And then the hand for Bird Up is going to be DD Crow, Barrier Statue, the Stormwind, Apex Avion, Tanky, and Feather Duster. So I guess this is put in because it was blind. Yeah, because I guess technically the opponent never revealed that he was on Drytron, so fair enough. And it sucks to draw these bricks for sure. DD Crow is not even going to be impactful. Not only because of the orange light, but because I think this hand's strong enough to play through it anyway. Because Alpha Benton plus uh, Drytron plays through Crow on Benton. And then there's just like not really a good chance to use it otherwise. Um, well, maybe, it, maybe we could hold it for like a later play. That could be good. We'll see. Uh, going to Alpha, should be Benton. Gonna summon itself and search Benton. And then Benton search Manju. Actually, yeah, we might just hold it for Meteonis instead. That's probably better. Uh, going to go for Manju. That's going to search for Meteonis. And then going to link into Carrier. And then use the Carrier effect. And that's going to equip the Dawn Knight from the deck. And then going to go for Meteonis. Tributing away the Carrier to summon back the Benten. And then going to send Delta off the Dawn Knight. And then from here, Dawn Knight is going to tribute away the Benten. That's going to reveal the Benten to draw. And then Benton gets the trigger, so we draw Emergency, and that's not bad. I mean, both Zeta and if he's playing a Beta don't have an effect right now, but it's just another name, so we take those. But yeah, Benton triggers to search for Ava, and then Meteonis is gonna target the Delta add itself back. Uh, here's where I probably dropped the uh, Crow, but I mean, there's Orange Light anyways, so it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, gonna activate Meteonis Drytron. That's gonna tribute away the Gamma out of hand to go for Ultimateness. Yeah, there's just no point or that yeah, or Crow could have ever been used. Especially because of Orange Light, but yeah, definitely definitely not great here. Uh, not great for the bird deck. Gonna be probably a win for Drytron. Benton can be attributed now for the Gamma. Summon itself, summon the Alpha, and then Benton triggers for a search for Lancia. And that's actually quite strong against this deck because it shuts off the Tribrigate engine from banishing to Link Summon, or Special Summon a Link Monster. So that's quite strong. Uh, activate Emergency to grab a copy of Zeta. And then going to Link into IP Mask Arena. And then Link for Link Rebo. And that's going to probably just be the end board. So we got 4 to 5 negates off Ultimateness depending on when Lancia or how Lancia is used. Uh, we got potentially Lancia and then we got Mask Arena to go for Unicorn. Yeah, there's not really any way to beat this. Fraternity is going to draw a Psychic Soldier that rides into battle against the security forces on Currents of Lightning using an autonomic amplifier called Cyframe. Yeah, let's uh let's go to game three with this hand. <laughs> yeah, no point in playing that one out. There's just no way to to win. So we're gonna now move into game three here. Looks like it's gonna be the bird up deck going first. It's kind of weird to call it bird up, but I mean it's literally so much easier to say than just try brigade lyrilisk every single time. So uh, the opening hand for bird up is gonna be Apex Avion, Sapphire Swallow, King of Bio, uh, Anti Spell Fragrance, and Fractal. This hand definitely is very good. Fractal is one of the best starters. Uh, it also combos very nicely with the King of Bio, because we can just send whatever level one to bring it back. Uh, so super strong. Uh, sucks to draw this again, but I mean, the rest of the hand is very, very good. And then the Drytron hand is Ash, Nibiru, Droplet, Natasha, Droplet. This hand is terrible. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, there's like a lot of go second cards, but literally just no engine pieces that are good. No Benton's or no Drytrons, which is crazy. Maybe he cited a lot of them out for like Droplets and stuff, but... Yeah, not very good here. Gonna Pitch Fractal. That's gonna send Cobalt Sparrow. And then we're gonna uh, normal summon the King of Bio and then summon back the Sparrow. And that can search for pretty much any missing name, which is Turquoise Warbler. Uh, can she summon herself? Actually, I forget. Uh, you can, yeah. But, I mean, it's not really gonna be super relevant here. Gonna Overlay for the Resital Starling and use her effect to detach Cobalt Sparrow. That way that this can summon this back. So more Link material. Um, but yeah, it's gonna grab Nerval. Um, or we can just summon the Nerval here as well. That works too. Uh, Sapphire Swallow, gonna summon herself and the Nerval. And then Nerval effect, that's gonna banish two to summon out the uh, the Ferigit or the Baron Blossom. And then gonna activate Nibiru here. So that's gonna wipe the board. It's not the end of the turn, I don't think, because we still get to float these two. 
So Nerval and Fledge chilling too. So that's going to draw another Nerval, which is decent. And we can put back the Apex Avion because it's free. And then going to search for Keros. So going to activate Keros here. That's going to pitch the, uh, the Nerval. Summon itself. And then we can also use Keros effect. Yeah, definitely still quite a lot of plays here. So Keros effect, that's going to banish two for another copy of the Furigit or the Baron Blossom. Yeah, because we didn't use the first one's effect since it got Nibiru on summon. So we can actually still special out this Turquoise Warbler out of hand. So yeah, going to special the Turquoise Warbler and she can special back the uh, Sapphire Swallow that was in Grave. And then we can go for some more Link Rebo, which is decent. Yeah, going to link for some more, and then link it to Link Rebo. And we actually ended on the board through Nibiru. Get set anti spell and then go to the end phase where we're going to trigger the Simorg to bring out the storm winds. And that is gonna be hard. Actually, wait. Ash on this probably would have been good, right? I mean, to be fair, the rest of the hand is so bad that I don't think it matters. Just depends on what the top deck is. I think honestly, Ashing the sovereignty makes it so that any Drytron top deck wins here that's pretty interesting uh for turn the top deck is going to be emergency uh, so it has to be an actual dry charm because of this which is anti-spell yeah so that's going to cut this off we could i guess maybe chain droplet but there's not anything to do here um i'm trying to think like how you even actually wait no it's definitely worth it to chain droplet right uh because then you like phoenix pop this you have Alpha Natasha, but then like, what do you do after that? Mm. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe it's not worth it. I'm not sure. It would have been a weird game. Like, this is already a weird hand. Yeah, so probably gonna chain Droplet just to try and play. Although it's not it's not amazing. Oh, just decides to let it go. All right. Oh, I totally uh did not screw it on the chat here. Uh, so gonna go battle phase attack over the. Samori, but of course Link Creep was there to protect it. And then going to set all the spells and pass. Uh, Enfei is going to use Samorg. And he's going to Ash that. Why would you Ash this turn and not last turn? I mean, I guess this curtails follow-up. But, I mean, there's still the Keros here. I don't think that's going to stop. Buried up here. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't know, that's an interesting one. I do feel like it was still worth it to probably just try and go for, you know... Normal Ash, go for anti spell. Yeah, it would have been tough though. Actually, no, there wouldn't have been enough cards, right? Because we would have had to pitch. So, like, droplets and away drop. I'm just trying to think this again. Uh, droplets and away droplet. Normal pit. Yeah, so the cards in hand would have been emergency and Tasha, and you need both of them. Okay, yeah, that play wouldn't have worked. But yeah, that just wouldn't have done anything. This hand was just so weak. <laughs> this wasn't a good hand. And for turn, we're going to see a top deck tanky. That's dead because anti spell. I mean, we can still Keros here, which is decent. Uh, we're going to go to main phase. And plus, these droplets are off right now because anti spell, like, they can't be activated till their next turn. So, can't, like, set quick plays and activate them on the opponent's turn. You have to wait a full round. Uh, going to Keros here. That's going to banish three to summon out the. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that because that sounds Nordic. Uh, the Desperate Doom Eagle. Uh, Hreis Velger. That's how I'm going to attempt to pronounce that. <laughs> I don't think that's even remotely close. Uh, going to use the Doom Eagle. That's going to... Yeah, shove away Ash because it's Skaden's attack. Uh, while there's no monsters in the opponent's grave. Yeah, so we're going to target Ash. And then go to go to battle phase. Uh, yeah, can't use Drop Whip. That'd be cool if like Drop Whip could like, negate this. Um... But yeah, no. Uh, Nibiru going to get beaten over and then going to attack for 22 plus 24 is 46 for a total. Oh, plus a nib token. So that's going to be quite a lot of damage. Uh, oh, that's the end of the game. All right. I didn't even do the math that time. But yeah, that was like what? 24 plus another 22, 46, 17 is 63 plus 48 is 18. So 63 plus 18 is 81. Ah, it's actually 100 over game. Wow. That is wild. Yeah, I just did all that math like on the spot right there. Sorry if it was kind of just a slur of words, but that's going to be Bird Up taking the game 2-1. to one. So shout out to MBT for actually winning this match. 
Um, from what I heard, his teammates actually lost. So they actually lost this entire round. But I mean, that's the nature of a 3v3, right? So it can't happen. You know, what are you going to do sometimes? Uh, that's Yu-Gi-Oh. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or your feedback in the comments. Subscribe for more informative and competitive Yu-Gi-Oh content. If you want to, you can follow me on all social media platforms or support me via Patreon, TSG player, all the links in the description as usual. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys.